Texas leads the nation in wind energy production. With no regulatory agency in place, this green industry can build wherever there's good wind. We need to change where we're getting our energy sources. We will have to locate wind turbines in places that are precious to lots of people. And here on the coast, where the wind may be strong, it's also home to the Central Flyway, a major migratory bird corridor. Millions of birds cross the Texas coastline each spring and fall during migration, and the question is, why would you put a wind farm on a site like that? Songbirds like the hooded warbler, to migrating raptors like these Swainson's hawks, to the threatened reddish egret. Hundreds of species either live on the coast or migrate through Texas as it sits squarely in the central flyway, a migration route from breeding grounds in the north to winter quarters in the south. And in this same area, wind farms set up to capitalize on these prime coastal winds. The real concern is not uh, the day-to-day -day collisions that might take place, but the circumstances that might create a major migratory bird fallout where you have a storm and literally thousands of birds trying to find a place to land and flying through the middle of a wind farm. One wind farm that's concerned about the birds in the central flyway is the Penascal wind plant, situated on the Kennedy Ranch along Baffin Bay. The wind blows hard here in South Texas, everybody knows that, but the wind blows hard when everybody needs it the most. So it's almost a perfect location in terms of customer demand. We can have well over 100 species at one time in these moths. Huh. Penascal staff biologist Jim Sinclair studied the property for four years before any of the 82 wind turbines went up. When they're coming in, they come in very high. And one top priority was to keep the turbines away from these sheltered bird resting spots called oak moths. This is where the songbirds will stop to rest and feed during the daytime during migration. But one of the reasons for creating a buffer around these oak moths for the turbines is it's going to significantly reduce the chances of, of strikes because the birds concentrate in the oak moths. And the other times when there can be a lot of birds in here. Yeah. Working to reduce bird strikes even more is Merlin. And we can see some low-level bird activity occurring. This radar system can see what birds are coming from four miles away. We can actually see the turbines and we can see the birds as they move around the turbines. Most of what we're detecting today, the birds are moving above the wind farm at above uh, 500 feet. Now the magic of Merlin, it has the capability to actually shut off the turbines if birds fly into the wind farm. The radar itself generates a curtailment command, and within less than one minute, all of the turbines will be turning at less than one RPM, very, very slowly, and within five minutes, all of them are completely stationary. The ability to shut down the turbines under abnormal conditions is what really helps turn wind energy into truly green energy. Will the cost of turning off the turbines be so high that they won't do it? And so the real issue is not so much whether or not they can do it, it's whether or not they will. That's just one of the questions on the minds of both Andy Kastner and wildlife biologists from Texas A&M Kingsville. Boy, this strong south wind probably had some good movement. So right next door on the neighboring King Ranch, they are using another Merlin to monitor the birds as well user-friendly screen with biological targets moving. Andy is here to meet research scientist Bart Ballard to get a feel for just how many birds could be affected by further wind development along the coast. Well, our main objectives for this study are to assess how many birds travel through this area, um, the altitudes they fly, how weather affects their flight characteristics. There's potential for some pretty large impacts. This study, funded in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife, will look at several migration seasons. A bird count before more wind development arrives. 
because of the tax credits that are available to wind energy production, it's beneficial for them to develop a site as quickly as they can and to get the wind turbines up and running. But the flip side of that, you don't have time in that case to do adequate scientific studies to monitor and make decisions based on wildlife impacts and whether or not that site is safe for wildlife. Back at the office, it's interesting, these peaks. Bart crunches the numbers. In the and in one fall migration, Merlin counted three million birds coming through the corridor in just three months. I think during most of the time, I think these birds are flying high enough and, and have good visibility. It's not going to be an issue. It's those, it's those times when they do migrate, when it's foggy out. Their visibility is very poor, and we think it pushes them down at a lower level, lower altitude when they're flying. Those are the conditions we're concerned about, at least in terms of some development along the coast. We're going to be able to observe large avian movements during a variety of weather conditions that we've never been able to see before. There are wind farms using the latest technology. And if we can make sure that we're doing it in the most responsible way, taking it very, very seriously, that is one way to help us clean up our energy supply. Scientists so 14 red secrets. and their long-term studies on protecting these Texas treasures our hope with this research is that it'll be used in the future to help cite some of this development where it has less impact on our bird population. We just have to make sure that the individual developers make the right sorts of siting decisions. Um, that's really what it boils down to in Texas or anywhere else. There's no doubt this sustainable and renewable energy source is here for good. And now it's up to us to make sure it stays green.